thrones were set up, and the Ancient of Days took his seat. His garments were white as snow, and the hair of his head was like pure gold. His throne was ablaze with flames, its wheels a burning fire. The river of fire was flowing and coming out from before him. Thousands and thousands attended him, and ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. The court was seated and the books were open. I kept watching because of the boastful words that the horn of the beast was speaking. I continued watching until the beast was slain and its body destroyed and thrown into the blaze of fire. As for the rest of the beasts, their dominion had been taken away, yet their lives were prolonged for a season at a time. As I was watching in the night visions, behold, one like a son of man, coming with the clouds of heaven, he approached the Ancient of Days and was brought into his presence. Dominion, glory, and sovereignty were given to him, that all peoples, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion that will never pass away, and his kingdom is one that will not be destroyed.
read a little bit here. This is Stephen Powell, is founder of Lion of Light Ministries, a ministry dedicated to preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ with science following and standing for biblical truth in the midst of culture. Since being visited face to face by Jesus at 19 years old, he has carried a powerful anointing for healing, miracles, and the prophetic. He has traveled extensively over years as a revivalist and prophet, seeing revival and extended meetings in multiple nations around. As well as thousands saved, healed, and delivered. Stephen's vision is to help the body of Christ experience the presence and the power of God in a real way. Be strengthened in their faith through strong biblical teaching to see the bride of Christ rise up to walk in the glory of his last days. Stephen and his wife and Amanda have four children and they are currently residing in Maricopa, Arizona. So let's welcome Stephen Powell this morning. Amen. Everything else goes. 
out of my walk with God comes the prophetic. Because I know God, I can hear his voice better. Because I know God, I encounter the Lord more. Because I know God, there's more of God manifesting on my life, which produces power. Amen? The Bible says in Acts 10, 38, how Jesus was anointed with the Holy Ghost and power. Yeah, that's right. He was anointed with presence first, then power. We don't want to bypass that operation. We don't want to bypass that order. We need to come into the presence of Jesus and develop a more intimate relationship with Holy Ghost. Then we will be anointed with power in a greater way. Amen? But if that sparks your interest, go check out our new Kingdom School of Ministry. It's online there. Also, when it comes time to give a little later, uh, there's a few different ways you, you can give. You can, um, If you have a check, they're going to write it out to the, the ministry here, right? They're going to write it out to Hope City Church a little later, okay? And if you are uh, if you want to give with a, a credit card or debit card, you can give through your guys' menu, right? You get, does everybody know that, right? Yeah. Yeah, so we can address that later, too. But you can also give as well. There's If you open this up to this little leaflet here, um, we have Cash App, PayPal, Venmo as well, and you can give security. That way. So, a few uh, other things here. I have a couple books that I brought with me. This is called The True Riches of a Noble Heart. It's based on a, a visitation I had with the spirit of wisdom and revelation a few years ago, where the Lord actually called me to an extended season of really pursuing the wisdom of God. I've been involved in revival ministry now for uh, a long time, and I've seen a lot of gifting, a lot of power in the charismatic church, but I've also seen a lot of foolishness. How many of you guys know that's not a good combination? <laughs> Right? It's like having little babies walking around in the body of Christ with loaded shotguns, and that's just never good, right? God wants us to have the shotgun, so to speak, in the spirit. He wants us to have the weapons of God that are mighty in God for the pulling down of strongholds, but he wants us to be mature, and he wants us to be wise so that when God does raise us up in great power and glory, we don't bring reproach to the name of Jesus. We don't bring shame to the name of Jesus. It's not God's will that he would raise us up and entrust us with great things only to lose that ground to the enemy and bring reproach to the name of Jesus. Can I hear it? Amen. So I burn for not just power, not just glory, but I burn for wisdom. I burn for maturity, for mature sonship in Jesus Christ. And daughtership, although it is a little tiny. So that's what that book's about. I talk about developing what the Bible calls the true riches. What are the true riches of a noble heart? How to develop those and then I have a book on financial glory. So I have a lot of revelation on financial breakthrough. I have a supernatural story of being raised up in the ministry. I come from Alaska, and I was a, a janitor at the local church in Alaska. And then God suddenly thrust me into full-time international ministry. And I ended up all over the world. And one of the keys that helped me to be raised up and launched like that was I had these angelic visitations from these angels that work in finances. How many of you guys know that it's not just the Holy Ghost and not just Jesus that's about your business? There's a whole angelic host in heaven that the Lord releases into the earth to work with you and I to actually help walk out our destiny. Yeah. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. And uh, I tell people, if you have a problem with me talking about angels, take it up with God. He's the one who wrote about it in the Bible. <laughs> Amen? Yeah. The Bible says that angels showed up and ministered to Jesus. Now, I can't even compute that. Why would God need any ministry? <laughs> right from an angel, but God, God ordained it. Right, the angels came and ministered to Jesus. Strength. The Bible says they ministered with him. So, if Jesus needed the ministry of angels, so do we. Can I hear an amen? Yeah, yeah. So, as a prophetic minister, part of my ministry is the discerning of spirits, not just evil spirits, but the Holy Spirit and even angelic spirits. And uh, I believe that the Lord wants to teach us to work even to a greater degree uh, nowadays with the host of heaven to see. Heaven's breakthrough here on the earth. Amen? So I was able, I've been able to work with angels over the years to see not just miracles, signs, and wonders, but even financial breakthroughs. So if you need a financial breakthrough in your life, if you need supernatural debt elimination, if you need a financial breakthrough to actually step into the thing that God's called you to do, I want to tell you this morning, God not only calls you, but he will supply, he will provide where he calls. Amen? He will provide where he leads you. You need to have faith for that. You need to believe for, for God to open up those doors. And I believe he'll even bring help from on high, even angelic assistance at times to help with that. Amen? So check out the books and check out the back table uh, back there, and uh, that'll be great. So let's pray. Father, we thank you for this morning. We thank you for the opportunity to come into your house, to gather together as the body of Christ, to worship you, to reverence your name. Lord, we reverence the name of Jesus here this morning. 
we reverence the name of Jesus. The only name that's worthy to be praised. The only name that's worthy to be exalted, to be lifted up on high. We reverence your name, Lord. And Lord, as we enter into this time, the ministry of the word, I pray that the word would go forth like a double-edged sword out of my mouth, Lord. I pray that it would divide thoughts from intents of heart, Lord. I pray that it would divide bone from marrow, Lord. I pray it would get into the very depth, Lord, of our heart, Lord, and cut away those things that don't belong, Lord. I pray come with a fresh operation of the Holy Ghost and power this morning, and even circumcise our hearts, God. Circumcise our hearts, God. Cut away, God, the influence of the world. Cut away, God, everything that's tried to lodge itself in there that is not of you, that is not of the seed of Christ, that is not producing the very person of Jesus in me, God. I pray, cut it away this morning, Lord, by the operation, God, of the Word of God, the ministry of the Word. Let the Word go forth like power, Lord. Let it hit like the hammer that breaks the rock in pieces. Let it be like the fire that burns up the chaff, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. Do we got anybody that's full of the Holy Ghost this morning? I don't know about you, I feel full of all the ghosts. I'm full of it. Say, I'm full of it. Hallelujah. I'm full of him. I'm full of him. Fill me up, Lord. Fill me up, Lord. Fill me up. Keep filling me, Lord. Keep baptizing me in the Holy Spirit, Lord. Yesterday's anointing is not enough, Lord. I need a fresh anointing, God. I need a fresh encounter with the Holy Ghost. I need fresh oil, God. Fresh oil. I pray fresh oil would come on this church, Lord. I pray fresh oil would come on Pastor Larry and Serena and their whole family and the leadership team here. I pray fresh oil, God, on Farmington, the Church of Jesus Christ in Farmington. Let us not be a dead church, God. Let us not be a sleeping church, but let us awake, awake, put on righteousness, put on power, put on the beautiful garments, put on a fresh anointing, the Lord says in Jesus' name. We ask for it, Lord, and we receive it in faith, Lord. We receive it in faith this morning in Jesus' name. If you believe that, shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many guys here? Was there anybody who was able to attend the conference this last weekend? Anybody? We got a few. Hey, we got a few of my friends. Wasn't it awesome this weekend? It was amazing. So. We're just going to keep rolling uh, today here, and, and if you're able to come out tonight, we're having a service at, what, 6 p.m. tonight? We're having a service right here at 6 p.m., and we'll see what the Lord does this morning, but for sure, uh, tonight, I'm going to really open it up, and I'm going to ask the Holy Spirit to come and move through me in the gifts of the Spirit. I'm going to believe for words of knowledge. I'm going to believe for miracles, signs, and wonders. I'm going to believe for healing, and I'm going to call people out specifically and believe for the Lord to give prophetic words as well. Amen? So if you need encouragement and you just uh, want to want to experience more of the Lord, come join us tonight. But this morning I want to preach a message called "The Angel Is on Its Way." Hold on, keep going. Breakthrough is imminent. The angel is on its way. Hold on, keep going. Breakthrough is imminent. If you have your Bibles, just go to uh, Daniel chapter. What is it? Daniel chapter 10. And it was cool. Uh, my brother actually read from Daniel this morning. The ancient of days. I'm like, oh, there it is. Hallelujah. Confirmation. I'm in the right book. Thank you, Lord. Who would have thought it? I hear the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> is there any way to lift this up a little bit, Pastor Larry? <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of a... Uh, I got, I got my, my lifts on this morning here. Right? <laughs> Praise the Lord. But I don't know about you guys, but as for me, this has been a year of uh, the good, the bad, and the ugly, okay? There's been such incredible breakthrough. There's been such incredible glory. I've been so amazed at what God's done in me. I've been so amazed at what God's been doing in my family, in my ministry. Uh, but in other ways, there has been real challenges. I mean, real challenges. The type of challenges... That it's like, God, if you don't come, I don't know what I'm going to do. Can anybody relate? The kind of challenges where you're like, Lord, I've exhausted every other solution. I've exhausted every resource I have. I've dug as deep as I know to dig, and it's still not happening. I'm still not getting the breakthrough. Lord, 
I need you to come. I need you to come and do this. Otherwise, it's not going to get done. And let me tell you something. When God comes and does it, not only does it get done, it stays done. Amen? I want, it, I want the job to get done. I want the breakthrough to happen. But I want to see the breakthrough sustained. I don't want to get healed and then walk out the door and 48 hours later it comes right back on me. I want to see fruit that remains. Amen? Yeah. Fruit that remains. And I believe that's the type of breakthrough that is imminent for many people that have been in this process where you've been standing on the word, you've been fasting, you've been praying, you've not been moved to the left or the right, you've been set on what God has promised you and you will not be deterred. I believe that is the type of breakthrough that is imminent for you. I believe it's heaven's breakthrough. Say heaven's breakthrough. Heaven's breakthrough. I don't want to settle for man's limited results. I want God's results. Yes. I want kingdom results. I want kingdom fruit. I want heaven's breakthrough. And I believe that is what is upon us uh, this year in 2023. For those that would not give up. For those that would not turn to the left or the right. For those that would not doubt the word of the Lord. How many of you guys know that when you really receive a strong word from the Lord, it will be tested? Yeah. Yeah. It must be tested. The Bible said in the book of Psalms that until the moment of the fulfillment of Joseph's word that he received, he was tested by that word. How was he tested? The Lord brought him into Egypt. Hallelujah. He had dreams of greatness, right? You guys remember the story of Genesis 37? Dreams of greatness, dreams of kingship, dreams of rulership. And what happened? The opposite. <laughs> right? What happened? Sold into slavery. I'm sure as he was being hauled off to Egypt in handcuffs or in chains, he was like, Lord, this is not what I had in mind <laughs> when you called me a kingship. This is not what you promised. But uh, just know that's part of being in the kingdom. <laughs> that's part of receiving great prophetic words. So some people come to me sometimes and are like, Stephen, give me a great old prophetic word. I'm like, are you sure you want that? <laughs> are you sure you want that? Because when you sign up for a great real prophetic word from the Lord, you're also signing up for the process that comes with it. You're coming up, you're signing up for the process of fulfillment. One of the hardest things to endure during the process of walking out your prophetic word is the test of time. The test of time will test you like nothing else. There are some words you have to be tested in not just days, not just months, but years. How about decades? How about, you know, Jacob, the struggle that he went through? He had to go decades uh, pressing in and believing for what God had for him, right? Have any of you been in a faith journey that's lasted decades? Anybody know? That could be sometimes the hardest test. Why? Because as the days and as the months and as the years roll by, you have to keep believing that God spoke what he spoke. You have to keep believing that he who promised is not only able to give the promise, but he's able to fulfill the promise. Amen? And you better believe that God is not a man that he should lie. When he promises you something, he will fulfill it. Amen? But you do have to do your part. You do have to do your part. We have to do our part. And that's what I want to talk about here in the story of Daniel. The Bible says in Daniel chapter 10 that he got something in his spirit, okay, something from the Lord in his spirit that, hey, I'm about to have an encounter. I'm about to have a breakthrough. But you know what? I think I'm going to fast and I think I'm going to pray for this breakthrough. I think I'm going to dedicate myself and consecrate myself at another level because I feel breakthrough coming, but it's like there's hindrance. It's like there's something resisting it. And you're going to notice here in the story, as I read it here in a moment, that Daniel prayed and he fasted. But when he was praying and when he was fasting, he was not fully aware of what was happening in the spirit. He was not fully aware of the real resistance that, that was happening. But when the angel finally showed up, the angel gave him revelation. He gave him understanding. He said, Daniel, from the moment you set your face, from the moment you began to pray, the breakthrough was in motion. Some of you need to hear that this morning. From the moment God put the word in your heart, from the moment that he turned you on to this new season, on to this new promise that you're beginning to touch right now in the spirit, and from the moment you agreed with that word and began to pray in agreement with God, from that very moment, things were set in motion in the spirit. Even angelic hosts were released from the heavenly realm to make the breakthrough happen here on the earth. But you have to do your part. Are you going to fast if God says to fast? Are you going to get up an extra hour in the morning to pray if God says, hey, I want a little extra prayer out of you? Are you going to put some things on the altar in this season if 
God says, hey, I need a little more focus out of you. I need a little more of your attention. It's not that doing some of these things is sin, but hey, it's a new season, and I need an extra level of dedication. Come on. I need a Joshua 3, 5 moment from you. Consecrate yourself. Set your, yourself apart. Sanctify yourself. For tomorrow, you're going to cross over into the promised land, and the Lord's going to do wonders before you. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. That's Joshua chapter 3, verse 5. It was not just another day in Israel's history. They'd experienced 400 years of bondage and slavery, but they were no longer in Egypt. So the Lord said, consecrate yourself. Set yourself apart. Is the Lord coming to you right now and saying, hey, it's not the same season anymore. There's a threshold that stands before you. There's a door standing open. But are you going to consecrate yourself to go through it? Are you going to consecrate yourself to enter into the new day? Are you going to consecrate yourself to enter into your promised land, the promises that God has given you? Or are you going to, are you going to stay in Egypt? You know, in the Bible, it talks about the children of Israel wanted to go back to Egypt. Can you believe that? 400 years of bondage. They're like, let's go back there. But you know what? Some people get used to their bondage. They get used to their government food stamps. They get used to their welfare. They get used to their assistance. They get used to just doing a nice little comfortable thing that they've been doing for all these years. But it's not God's will for you to stay there. It's not God's will for you to stay where you've been. Jesus died on the cross to raise you up as a manifested son and daughter of God to live the abundant life and to live all that God has purposed for you to do on this earth. Amen? But are you going to stay in a comfortable place just concerned about filling your belly or keeping a roof over your head? You know, Esau made that mistake. He said, you know what? Let's just fill my belly in this moment. Let's just satisfy myself with a momentary fleshly pleasure and let's, let's sell my birthright. There's some people that will sell their birthright because you know what? It's too uncomfortable, Lord. It's too uncomfortable to enter uh, into the new season. It's too uncomfortable. Even the children of Israel said, hey, I want to go back to Egypt because at least we had some food there. At least we weren't you know, sitting around waiting for the quail to fall out of the sky. Sitting around waiting for manna to show up. You know, a lot of times when you're in transition from Egypt to the promised land, you really do have to rely on supernatural sustenance. You really do have to rely on miracle provision. But let me tell you, that's a good place to be in. Because you're learning to trust God. You're learning to trust God with a little. If you can't trust God with a little, you're never going to be able to trust God when you have much. Oh, and here's another word that pastor will love. If you can't tithe when you have nothing, you'll never be able to tithe when you have millions. You'll never be able to tithe whenever you actually have something. Too many people, they make a deal with the devil. They say, oh, I'll tithe whenever I actually have something to tithe. No, if you don't tithe when you have nothing, you'll never tithe when you have something. Right. Right. You think it gets easier as you get more? No, it actually gets harder and more complicated. It actually gets harder and more complicated. Be faithful in the little, then you'll be trusted with more. Oh, Is this helping anybody so far? Daniel chapter 10, verse 1. In the third year of Cyrus, king of Persia, a message was revealed to Daniel, whose name was called Belteshazzar. The message was true, but the appointed time was long. How many guys can bear witness with that? It's like, Lord, I heard your word, but this is taking a little too long. This is taking a little more time than I thought. I thought it surely would have happened within a few months. Lord, we've got years in this. Years. But are you going to turn to the left or the right? Are you going to turn back just because it's taking longer than what you thought? Or are you going to hang in there and stand on the word no matter what? you got to get that tenacity in your spirit that I'm going to believe God. I'm going to stand on the word. I'm going to do this God's way no matter what. Amen? And I believe if you make that decision, you stand by that decision, I believe God will honor you. I believe the seeds that you've been sowing, you will reap a harvest in due season if you hang in there. Amen? If you don't become weary and well-doing. The message was true, but the appointed time was long. That's the test of time right there. And he understood the message and had understanding of the vision. Now, he did have some understanding here of the message. And he did have understanding of some of the visions that had begun to come to him. But as you're going to see here a little later on, he's going to get more understanding when this angel shows up again. 
It says in verse 2, In those days I, Daniel, was mourning three full weeks. So in case you're wondering, here is some of the understanding that Daniel had. Number one, he knew he had to mourn. He knew he had to go into a season of mourning, a position of mourning, sackcloth, ashes, fasting. He knew he had to position himself a certain way in prayer and before God for three weeks. Listen to me. Not two weeks, not one week, not four weeks, three weeks. How did he know to do it for three weeks? He got a revelation from God. I want to tell you this morning, God's very, very specific. When God asks you to fast three weeks, you better fast three weeks. When God asks you to go for six months and no longer do something, you better go the six months, amen? You better be faithful. You better fulfill your part. If you expect God to do his part, do your part, amen? amen. Be obedient. Do the fast. Do the prayer time. Whatever it is he's asking you to do, do it with all your might, amen? Yeah. Here is some of the other understanding he had. Verse 3. I ate no pleasant food. Okay? So pleasant food here is defined as meat and wine. He says, I ate no meat. I drank no wine. None of these things touched my lips. None of these things came into my mouth. Nor did I anoint myself at all till three whole weeks were fulfilled. So back in those days, the anointing of the face and the anointing of the skin, that was kind of like what you might say, uh, you know, some, some you know, taking care of himself, right? So this is a prophetic picture, right? This is a prophetic picture that he was willing, even on the outside, to kind of look like he didn't have it all together. He was willing to even appear in the eyes of man that, hey, what's going on with Daniel? He doesn't look so good. He hasn't anointed his face in a little bit. Now, I'm not saying, you know, go three weeks without a shower. That's not what I'm saying, right? Please take a shower while you're fasting. Can I hear an amen? Amen. <laughs> but understand, the word of God's prophetic. This is all prophetic, amen? He was willing to lose a little bit of his dignity. He was willing to allow other people to think certain things about him, even though he knew the opposite was true. In case you're wondering, this is part of the process of prophetic fulfillment. A lot of times when you're in process with God, a lot of other people will look from the outside looking in, and they'll have judgments and criticisms about you that aren't even close to the truth. Let them happen. Amen? It's not about what they say. It's about what God says about you. Are you performing for men? Or are you performing for one? Right. Are you performing for God? Amen? She cut up us But that's part of the testing that will come too. It's not just the testing of time, but it's the testing of, hey, I'm going to look. I may have to look a certain way for a period of time. I may have to be misunderstood. Have you guys know Jesus was misunderstood? It's part of what got him, him crucified. They said, look, he said he was going to tear down the temple in three days. He's a blasphemer. He's an enemy of Israel. But how many of you guys know when Jesus spoke that, he was speaking prophetically. But Jesus didn't rise up in the court there and defend himself. He didn't say, hey, no, 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 no. That's not what I was saying. That's not what I meant. Some of you need to quit defending yourself. You need to let God defend you. Amen? God knows it's not what you meant. But they're going to twist it anyways. because they, they got a Leviathan spirit on them. That twisting serpent. They're going to twist your words. Let them. God will defend you. God will back you. Amen? But it was three whole weeks. He could eat no pleasant food. He could eat wine. Or he could not eat meat. And wine could not come into his mouth. And he could not anoint himself. Okay? So this is part of the revelation that he received from the Lord. And he was obedient with what God told him to do. So let me ask you this morning, what are the specific things that God is calling you to do in this season and hour? What are the specific things that are actually connected to your breakthrough? Now, I'm not a works guy. I'm a grace guy. But the Bible does say faith without works is dead. Amen? So it's not like you just throw out works altogether, right? Works are important. I believe works are important when it comes to being obedient to the Lord. When it comes to being obedient to the Lord. When God calls you to do it, it will be fueled by supernatural. Can I hear an amen? amen? Verse 4. Now on the 24th day of the first month, as I was by the side of the great river, that is the Tigris, I lifted my eyes and I looked and behold, a certain man clothed in linen whose waist was girded with gold of Euphrates. Verse 6. His body was like barrel, his faith like face like the appearance of lightning, his eyes like torches of fire, his arms and feet like burnished bronze in color, and the sound of his words was like the voice of a multitude. Can you say awesome encounter? <laughs> awesome. Lord, 
give me awesome encounters. I want awesome encounters like Daniel experienced. I want awesome encounters, Lord, like they experienced in the Bible. Does anybody have that hunger? I know I do. I've experienced some great things in my life, but I want more. I'm hungry for more. Verse 7, And I, Daniel, alone saw the vision. For the men who were with me did not see the vision, but a great terror fell upon them, so that they fled to hide themselves. I love that. Just picture this in your mind. Picture this with the eyes of your heart. It's like he's having an encounter with the Lord. He's seeing the angel openly, but the people around him were not seeing the angel, but they sure felt it. They were like, I don't know what's going on. I don't know what you're seeing, but I feel something. It's freaking me out. I'm getting out of here. Right? Whoa, she got a little somebody up. Is somebody up. Forgive me as I just have a little joy here this morning because I need the joy of the Lord, which is my strength. I don't know about you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. But even prophetically speaking, God will show things to you that He's not going to show to people around you at times. He's not going to show, even at times, to your leaders. How about this? The Bible says that God was doing something so deep in Hannah, so deep in prayer. I mean, she was literally birthing. Uh, in the spirit, Samuel. Samuel was going to come forth and actually inaugurate the, fir the first kingdom of Israel. He was going to preside over the transition from judges to kings to the kingdom of David. Sam uh, Hannah was birthing that, and Eli comes up to her and says, what are you, drunk? It's too early in the day. What have you been sipping on the wine there? What is that? That's called misunderstanding. There'll be people around you. It's like your God's doing it, something in you that is so holy, and they'll be like, oh, that, that, you're drunk. Something's going on there, right? They have no understanding at times of what you're going through. That's okay. Let them think what they want to think. If you are so worried about what other people think, you're never going to fulfill your destiny. You're going ne never going to walk out the call of God. You're never going to step into true prophetic fulfillment for your life. You've got to be ultimately concerned, what does God think? Amen? Am I going to fear man or am I going to fear God? So he was seeing something, and they didn't see it, but they felt it, and then they got out of there. <laughs> oh, she got up a samba, but yeah. Verse 8, I could go on some more rabbit trails, but I'm going to keep going here for the sake of time. Verse 8, therefore I was left alone. Say alone. 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 That's right. That's what's going to happen sometimes when you decide to follow God. You will find yourself at times alone. But let me tell you something. When you find yourself alone, when you find yourself separated from the season, even from people that you've been walking with a long time, God is in that. God is in that. Did it ever dawn on you that maybe you need to be alone right now? Did it ever dawn on you that maybe God wants your full attention in this season? There were times in the ministry of Jesus where he's like, I'm getting away from all y'all, and I'm going to be alone. I'm going into the wilderness. I'm going up on the mountaintop. I'm going to be alone with my Father. Sometimes when you're alone, sometimes when everybody leaves you, God better than you've ever heard of before. So quit looking at your circumstance from the standpoint of what I've lost and what's no longer working for me and all the people that left me and all my rejection, wounded childhood issues. Start looking at it from the redemptive lens of heaven, the redemptive lens of God, and start thinking about all the things that God's trying to do with you right now. That God's trying to work in your life right now. That he's trying to show you. That he's trying to develop in you. That maybe he couldn't develop in you the way he wants to develop it in you if you weren't in this season right now that you're in. Amen? She come up Therefore, I was left alone when I saw this great vision. The greater vision that you have from God, there'll be times and seasons where you'll feel completely alone. Completely alone. Those are usually the times and seasons when you have to embrace your cross. Yeah, that's right. When Jesus was in the heyday of his ministry, miracles, signs, and wonders happening, everybody was around. Everybody was pressing in. The multitudes, oh, but when things got dicey, they all ran to the hills. Even his disciples. He's like, where did everybody go? All I got is John and a couple of ladies here. Where did everybody go? Where's the super powerful Peter? I'll tell you where he's at. He's over there listening to the rooster and denying me. <laughs> right? When you really go through testing, when you really go through shaking, you're going to find out who's really your friends. You're going to find out who the real people that God's put in your life versus the people that have just come around to get something from you. Yeah. The people that God's put in your life will have grace to stay in your life even when the 
shaking comes, even when it gets controversial, even when you got a little stigma on you because you're going through some God stuff. Yeah, that's right. You go through some God stuff, you'll, you'll endure, endure stigma at times. You'll endure false accusations. You'll endure a lot of people thinking things about you that aren't true. That's okay. That's okay. Ultimately, it matters what God thinks about you. Amen? Amen. Therefore, I was left alone when I saw this great vision. The greater the vision, the greater the sacrifice. The greater the vision, the greater the calling, the greater the testing that comes with it. And no strength remained in me. I'm on verse 8 still. No strength remained in me. When you're going through testing, you'll feel at times like there's no strength left in you. Like, God, I don't have another ounce of energy. I can't go another step. I'm telling you, when you're in that moment right there, when you're really feeling that, your breakthrough is upon you. I want to tell you this morning, keep going. Keep pressing in. Keep pressing on. The angel is on its way. The angel is coming. Keep fasting. Keep praying. Keep declaring the word of the Lord. God's about to send Michael to bust up that prince of Persia. Gabriel's going to make it through the lines of the enemies. Your breakthrough is coming. Your blessing is coming. In the name of Jesus. No strength remains in me. That's the perfect place to be. Because in your weakness, the power of God is perfected, according to 2 Corinthians 12. Some of you have been asking for a greater anointing on your life, but it never dawned on you that it was the path of weakness that was actually going to bring that anointing. It was the path of, lo path of loss. It was the path of shame. It was the path of suffering that was actually going to facilitate that greater anointing on your life. Paul said, I feel weak. I'm in weakness. I have a thorn in the flesh, Lord. Deliver me. And the Bible says the Lord didn't answer him until the third time. It's another test you have to endure. You're going to pray, and it's going to be like brass heavens, and you're like, God, are you there? Am I still even saved? <laughs> I've gone through that at times. There's been times where I've got up in the pulpit, I'm like, man, I feel like God's so far away from me right now. Even before I get up in the pulpit, I'm like, Lord, are you there? <laughs> even preachers go through. But there's something beautiful about ministry, you know, when you're anointed, when you have a call from God. I can feel like on the front, I didn't feel this this morning, right? but times past. You can feel like on the front row, you're like, Lord, I feel no alone. I feel like you're not with me. I feel like, Lord, you've forsaken me. How many of you have ever feel, felt that? Can you, can you be real here this morning? Can I be real as a minister of the gospel? I'm just like you. I go through a lot of the same stuff. But the anointing is so beautiful. Usually the moment I get into the pulpit and grab the mic, it's like, it just comes on me. It just comes on me. This is like a mantle just drops on me from heaven. And I do... Okay, uh, I do the ministry that God's called me to do, not in my own weakness and human limitation. I do it in the grace of God. Yeah. I do it in the strength of God. That's what the anointing is. It's grace personified. It enables you to do what you can't do in your own strength. Amen? Amen. So if you're in, this, in, in that place, just receive fresh, fresh grace. Receive a fresh anointing. I believe that's what God's going to do. I believe that's why God sent me here this weekend, even to this church for such a time as this, even going into tonight, I'm going to lay hands on everybody tonight that anybody who comes here, and I'm going to receive a fresh anointing on your life. A fresh anointing, a fresh grace. And you're going to keep going. You're going to press on. You're going to press through. Amen? Yeah. But this is another uh, test that you have to endure. Are you going to keep going when you feel no strength remain? He says, my vigor was turned to frailty in me, and I return, retain no strength. Verse 9, yet I heard the sound of his words. Oh, I felt no strength, yet I heard the sound. I heard the words. I heard the Lord speaking to me. And while I heard the sound of his words, I was in a deep sleep on my face with my face to the ground. I believe that Daniel was in a trance, what's called a trance here. This is like a, 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 a dreamlike state that you go into to have revelation. Verse 10, suddenly, say suddenly. suddenly, suddenly, he said, a hand touched me, which made me tremble on my knees and on the palms of my hands. I believe that some of you are about to experience a suddenly in your life. Say suddenly, suddenly, suddenly the angel is going to touch you. Suddenly, the hand of the Lord is going to come upon you like it came upon Elijah. And the Bible says he outran the chariots that were bred to pull. He outran the horses that were bred to pull the chariots of kings. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Amen? Keep going. Just when you feel no strength, just when you feel like you can't go on, you have no strength left within you, that's the moment when the hand of God is going to come on you. That's the moment when you're going to 
receive a fresh touch. That's the moment when God is ready to break through and break into your life. Amen? Amen. Suddenly that hand touched me, which made me to tremble on my knees and on the palms of my hands. You've heard it said that we fight our battles on our knees. Amen? We're the only army that advances on our knees. Some of you need to get on your hands. You need to get on your knees. You need to get on your face before God. Some of you have been trying to work your way out of this, but there are some things you can't work your way out. you got to pray your way out. Amen? you got to fast your way out. The weapons of our warfare are mighty in God for the pulling down of strongholds. There's some people that find themselves under a curse. They find themselves under a curse. And you know what? You can't outwork a curse. God's got to break the curse. Amen? Amen. You've got to break the curse through persistence, through believing in the blessing of God that comes through the blood of Jesus. Verse 11, it says, He said to me, O Daniel, man greatly beloved. I love that. When the Lord comes to you and He begins to restore you, He begins to raise you up after a difficult season. He's going to speak words of affirmation to you. He's going to speak words of kindness to you. He's going to speak words of love to you. He's going to speak words of strength to you. Amen? I believe the Lord would say that to us here this morning. You are greatly beloved. The Lord would ask you this morning, do you know how much you are loved? Do you know how greatly you are loved? The love of God sent His only begotten Son to the cross to die a hideous death for you. And if you were the only one on this planet, He would have done it. He would have taken every nail. He would have taken every stripe. He would have taken every bit of abuse that he suffered if you were the only one that needed it. Do you believe that this morning? Yes. Do you have any people in the house of God that believe the gospel? Yeah. That believe the good news? Yeah. We struggle to believe it at times when our outward circumstances says otherwise. We struggle to believe it at times when people leave us, when people dog us, when people abuse us. And then Satan is there to interpret those events for you. Satan is there to give you his narrative, to feed you his demonic narrative. Satan will come and tell you, this is why this has happened to you. They left you because you're no good. They left you because you're not lovable. They left you because you're no good. I'm telling you right now, if you believe Satan's narrative, you're going to live that narrative out. I don't know about you. As for me, as for my household, I'm going to believe the report of the Lord. I'm going to interpret my life events through the, through the word of God, through the lens of heaven, through God's narrative. Amen? Amen. How about you? Yeah. As a man thinks, so is he. Yeah. Let it be done unto you according to your faith. What are you going to believe this morning? What is the version of the story that you're going to believe? There's many versions of the story that we can believe. But you can choose to believe a version of your story that is empowering. You can choose to believe a version of your story that tells you that God was in it all along and God has a purpose in the pain that you've gone through. Amen? Does anybody get anything out of this? I know I'm getting something. Amen. I'm preaching it. Hallelujah. Suddenly, say suddenly, the hand touched him and he was raised up. Verse 11, he said to me, O Daniel, man greatly beloved, understand the words that I speak to you. Stand upright. The Lord is saying to many of you, now it's time to come into a new level of understanding, a new level of revelation, to receive a new anointing, and it's time to stand up. It's time to stand up tall. Stand up tall. Quit slumping over. Quit walking in your shame. Quit walking in your guilt. Let go of the past season. Let go of the failures. Let go of the moral failures. Let go of that failure that happened in your marriage. Give it to Jesus. It's covered by the blood. Stand upright on your feet. Amen? Amen. Lift your head up. God is the lifter of your head and your glory. Amen? Yes. He said, while he was speaking this word to me, I stood trembling. Now notice how there's multiple times here where Daniel emphasizes, I stood trembling. What is that? That's the fear of God right there. That's the power of God. Have any of you ever trembled when God came upon you? I believe that God wants to come upon you in a fresh way. I believe he wants to cause that tremble. Isaiah the prophet said in the book of Isaiah, he said, this is the 
one that God will look to. He that trembles at the hearing of my word. We ought to take the words of God seriously. Amen. Oh, and my sambaya, we ought to fear the Lord. We ought to take the things of God seriously. I believe God's speaking right now, and we need to come under the influence of that word. We need to come under the power of that word. We need to submit ourselves fully to the word of the Lord in this hour. Verse 12, then he said to me, do not fear, Daniel, for from the first day that you set your heart to understand and to humble yourself before God, your words were heard, and I have come because of your words. What a powerful, loaded, TNT, dynamite, Holy Ghost, scriptural statement there. I don't know about you, I love the word of God. Does anybody else just love the word of God? I sometimes feel like when I'm reading the word under the anointing, I'm just going to lose it. Ah! Are there chandeliers? Can I swing that? Those are a little tall there. Hey. But uh, I just want to swing this book on something right now. Because this is just so loaded with Holy Ghost TNT power. Let's break it down. Daniel, do not fear. So there's a healthy fear of the Lord, but then there's an unhealthy fear. Don't go into the unhealthy fear. Daniel, from the first day, say the first day. First day. From the first day that you set your heart to understand. Here's another test that you're going to have to endure when you're in process. You're going to have to set your heart to understand, but you're going to have to wait at times for the understanding. God, why did they leave me? God, why did the relationship fall apart? God, why was I with that church on staff and it all just went so wrong, even though I had such a clear word from you? about how it was all going to go down. Why? Why, why, why? Have you ever been tormented by the why questions? Anybody? Well, there are some things that you're just going to have to give to God because some things you're not going to understand this side of eternity. Amen? There are some things that as you walk with God more, you're going to realize, you know what? I don't need to know that. It's actually my own insecurity, my own fears about my own self that's been wanting to know that. I don't need to know that. I just need to give that to the Lord and trust the Lord. Right. Amen. Right. And quit believing Satan's lies about me. But there are some things that you do need to understand. There are some things because Daniel was a prophet to the nation of Israel. He was a biblical prophet. They're in Babylon. They're in a specific season of 70 years of bondage. And there were some things that as a prophet of the Lord, he needed to understand. He had a ministry in which he needed to understand because he needed to write it in this good book for you and I. Amen? So on the things that you need to understand, God will identify those things and he'll send you on a quest. He will send you on a journey to seek understanding. The Bible says in the book of Proverbs, it is the glory of God to conceal a matter, but it is the glory of kings to search it out. I charge you this morning, search out that understanding. Search out the word of the Lord. Search out the revelation that God has put you onto, amen? And as you keep fasting, as you keep praying, as you keep seeking, the understanding is going to come to you, even if God's got to send an angel to get the point across to you. <laughs> There's some times in my life where I've had a pretty powerful encounter, and it's come, you know, pretty uh, directly, either through an angel or through some sort of vision that I had or something. And it's kind of funny, after the fact, I would say, wow. You know, I can see now that God's been trying to get my attention about that for a while, but I just wasn't getting it. <laughs> Amen? Yeah. So it was like, let me help this young man out. Let me send the angel, right? <clears throat> but know this. If you're not receiving very much direct revelation, there's usually a purpose in that as well. Because here's a little prophetic principle for you. The more direct the revelation is that comes from heaven, the more warfare there is with it. The more warfare there is in it. Sometimes God will bypass the vision and he'll give you the word in a dream because the word that's given in a dream is usually concealed. It requires interpretation. But God doesn't conceal the revelation from you. He conceals it for you because Satan doesn't have the Holy Spirit to discern it and to interpret the dream. Have you ever thought about that? God will hide things for you at times, not from you. Amen? So learn to trust the Lord even with the process of revelation and understanding. But the Bible says that Daniel set his heart, say set. set. You've got to set your heart to understand. Then you have to humble yourself before God. There are some breakthroughs that are not going to happen in your life until you humble yourself. Until you get out of your head, until you get out of your pride, until you get out of this space where it's all about you. Okay? And you make it all about Jesus. The Bible says.
Bible says in Psalm 35 that David humbled himself with fasting. So we see here in the book of Daniel that Daniel actually used fasting. He used this three-week Daniel fast to humble himself before God. There's some of you, you need a little help with humbling. There's some of us, we're too much in our flesh, we're too much in our soul. If we just use these weapons of our warfare like fasting that are mighty in God, it'll help to humble you, even humble your flesh before God like nothing else will. And trust me, I'm a new covenant grace guy, but Jesus said in the New Testament, when you fast, not if you fast. I'm a faster, amen? I also feast at praise God, but I'm a fasting too, amen? We're going to go and feast after this, amen? Speaking of that, oh, look at that, we went 45 minutes, better keep going. But he set his heart to understand, and he humbled himself. So you need to ask the Lord. If you're not getting breakthrough in a particular area, you need to ask the Lord, Lord, do I need to humble myself in an area of my life? If you're not getting breakthrough in your marriage right now, you need to ask the Lord, Lord, do I need to humble myself in an area of how I interact with my spouse, of how I interact with my wife, of how I interact with my husband? Is there an area that I need to humble myself in? I believe that God's all about humility. Amen? It says he humbled himself before God. You need to do things before God. You need to do things with God in mind, not with man in mind. You need to perform before the audience of one, not before the audience of people. Amen? He says, I have come because of your words. Verse 12. I have come because of your words. What a powerful statement. The angel came because of Daniel. You guys see that this morning? The angel came because of Daniel. The angel came because of Daniel's words. The angel came because of Daniel's prayers. Because he humbled himself. Because he fasted. The implication here is clear. If Daniel had not have prayed, if he had not have fasted, if he had not have humbled himself, the angel wouldn't have come. I know that can be difficult for some people to grasp today, especially in the church environment today, because we're so grace-centric in so many places in the West. And, oh, it's not about you, and it's about God. Yeah, it is about God, but it's about your decision, too. Right. It's about what you do, too. Right. You have to be faithful with your part. Otherwise, there's no faith in it. Amen? Yeah. The person that just sits around on her hands and expects God to do anything, there's no faith in that. Read James chapter 2. He says, you show me your faith, I'll show you my faith by my works. Amen? I taught that yesterday morning in the healing school, and I was talking about healing my faith. We've, we've got to be grace and faith people. Amen? It's by the grace of God, lest we should boast, not of our works, but it's by grace through faith, Ephesians 2. The grace of God will supernaturally empower your works, and when God tells you to do something, you do have to do it. There are some, listen to me, and listen to me carefully, there are some breakthroughs that are not going to happen in your life until you do what God says to do. Amen? Yeah. Do it. Do the fast. Do the prayer. Humble yourself. The angel is on his way. Verse 13. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me 21 days. Oh, here it comes now. Here's the understanding now. Oh, well, this is why it's been so difficult. This is why it's been so crazy. In case you're wondering, I'm preaching this out of personal experience. There's been so many crazy things happening lately in my life. I mean, you would think by my demeanor, maybe this morning, that things are good. And, you know, I'm just happy and full of the Holy Ghost and everything's going great. But I've been experiencing hell on earth this year. <laughs> hell on earth. I mean, even coming here to New Mexico a few days ago, I'm driving out of town, Maricopa, Arizona, to come here. And the moment my car leaves our town, uh, apparently a hole busts in, in, in one of the hoses, okay, in my car uh, that, that, that carries the coolant through it. I'm not a mechanic, so forgive me as I describe this. And my car starts overheating and shutting down five minutes outside of town. And I've got to preach that night. So I turn around and I go back and park it at the mechanics and my wife comes and gets me and you know, I, I bring a backup vehicle here, and then we, you know, a couple hours down the road in the backup vehicle, that vehicle starts overheating. And I'm like, are you kidding me? I don't recall any time in my history in which I've had a vehicle overheat at all. And the day I decided to go on a ministry trip to Mexico, it's just all overheating and everything's blowing up around me? I'm like, I rebuke you, Satan, in Jesus' name. I'm telling you, the devil gets in my keyboard, and he gets in my car at times. And I have to rebuke him. But I'm telling you, it, 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 
it's not just like those incidents. That's just like a few incidences, okay, of things that have been happening lately where it's so bizarre, it's so out of the ordinary, it's like something's going on here. There's an angel on its way, but there's some prince of Persia in the background there that's resisting. But you know what? I'm not going to turn to the left or the right. I'm going to keep fasting. I'm going to keep praying. I'm going to keep decreeing and declaring the word of the Lord because my breakthrough is upon me. Amen? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know about you. I'm believing for some big things. I'm believing for some big things in my life. I need some big breakthroughs from God in my life. If you only knew. If you only knew what I was talking about. You only knew some of the things I've been dealing with. There's some things I've been dealing with this year that if it was not for God, if it was not for the supernatural, sovereign hand of God upon my life, I would not be here. I would not be here. I would not be in the ministry right now. But I, I'm a living testimony to what I'm preaching here this morning. God is faithful. Amen. Romans chapter 4. Yes. He who promised is able. He who promised is able to perform the word of the Lord. And he will perform the word of the Lord. The angel will break through the lines of the prince of Persia in your life if you do your part. Amen? Yes. Amen. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me 21 days. Exactly 21 days. You know how many days Daniel fasted and prayed and humbled himself? 21 days. Let me ask you something. How many of you have stopped on day 20? How many of you have gotten to the end of day 20 and you're like, you know what? It's not happening. Too much time has gone by. Let's go have a cheeseburger and just sulk. <laughs> not that cheeseburger eating is sin. I'm probably going to have one after this. Hallelujah. But during the 21 days, you better keep your mouth shut and keep the cheeseburger out of it. Amen? Someone's like, did he just say that? I just did because I'm in my prophetic memory right now. So, yeah, I can tell you to keep your mouth shut while you're fasting. Amen? You guys hear me this morning? I hope you can hear my heart. I hope you can hear the heart of God on this message this morning, that God is more hungry for you to experience breakthrough than you are. You may feel desperate. You may feel like you're at your wit's end. But let me tell you something. God still wants it more than you do. Amen? So he brings prophetic ministries like me in who bear his heart and kind of express some of that emotion. A lot is about the emotions of God, the heart of God. God is so hungry for some of you to step into the new season. He's so hungry for some of you to quit wandering in the wilderness, to quit hanging out in Egypt and settling for less than what he died to give you. He's so hungry for you to be elevated. He's so hungry for you to be promoted. He's so hungry for you to go to the next level. But are you going to do your part? And this is a word to the church here as well. This is a word to Hope City Church, I believe. Hope City Church, are you going to do your part? I'm not just talking about Pastor and Serena. I'm talking about all of you. Are you going to do your part to see to it that this church goes to the level that God wants to take it here in Farmington? Come on, somebody. Let's get real. If a church is going to succeed, if a church is going to accomplish the will of God for it, it's going to take more than Pastor and Pastor's family showing up week after week being faithful. Amen? And let me tell you something. It's going to take more than coffee and donuts, as much as I love coffee and donuts. Hallelujah. It's going to take fasting. It's going to take prayer. It's going to take warfare. It's going to take contending. Amen? It's going to take you, the church of Jesus Christ, taking up those weapons of your warfare that are mighty in God for the pulling down of strongholds. The Lord would charge you this morning here, a church of Farmington, tear down the strongholds that are over Farmington. Tear down the strongholds of the enemy in the southwest. Tear down the strongholds of the enemy in New Mexico. That's why you're here. Amen? Amen. You're not here to play patty cake church. Right. You're not here to be a part of a social club. There's plenty of social clubs out there that you can be a part of. You're here to be the mighty end time warrior bride of Christ. Amen? Rise up. Rise up. The prince of Persia withstood me 21 days, verse 13, and behold, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me, for I had been left alone there with the kings of Persia. Ah, this is Gabriel speaking, but Gabriel was left alone, and the Bible says that God said, Michael, one of the chief princes. I love that. It's like, the Lord is sending his best for you. 
The Lord is not sending in the reserve units. He's not sending in the backups. He's not sending in the B team. He's sending in the A team on your behalf. Amen. Yeah. He's sending in the best of the best. Amen. He's got the cream of the crop for you. He's got the fatted calf for you. It's waiting. It's ready to be slain. It's ready to be served up for you. Amen. How many of you guys believe that in your heart? How many of you know that in your knower that God really does have the best for you? Some of you have been so beaten down by the spirit of poverty since your youth, since your childhood. Honestly, you need to get that in your spirit. I'm a child of God. I'm a child of God. God has the best for me. God has the fatted calf for me. And I need to start expecting that in my life. Just because life experiences has taught you to expect less doesn't mean that you are to expect less. You're, ex you're to expect the best because you have a good, good father. When you ask for bread, he's not going to give you a stone. When you ask for a fish, he's not going to give you a serpent. When you ask for an egg, he's not going to give you a scorpion, says the Lord. Amen? He's a good, good father. If you're if your father's in this world not to give good gifts, how much more does your father in heaven know how to give good gifts to him or her who asks him? Yeah. Ask him for good things in this hour. He's ready to give it to you. Right. Verse 14, this is the last verse. Now I have come to make you understand what will happen to your people in the latter days, for the vision refers to many days yet to come. Ooh. Amen? So here's what you have to do. Is in when you're in a major transitionary season, okay? And when you're in a crucial time in your life, you have to pray. I do believe you should fast if you can. You have to humble yourself before God. You have to do your part. You have to discern the specifics, okay? If God says 21 days, don't stop at 20, amen? You have to do your part. And also, you have to prepare yourself for what God is going to say when the breakthrough does come. Now, uh, Daniel was, was an interesting prophet. So was Jeremiah. It actually says here in the book of Daniel that Daniel actually learned, okay, about what Gabriel was speaking to him, about the length of time and the length of years. Uh, in, in part, not just in the Revelation, but in part through studying the writings of Jeremiah. How many of you guys remember that? I believe it's in, uh, it's in verse uh, Daniel chapter 9, verse 2. If you need that reference. Daniel chapter 9, verse 2 talks about how Daniel received greater understanding and confirmation from the Lord in the Mount of Two or Three Witnesses, right? When he studied the writings even of prophets that had come before him. Now, if you know anything about Jeremiah, the Bible says Jeremiah had to take a stand against the prophets in Israel, even some of the false prophets. And here was their main narrative. Their main narrative of the false prophets was, hey, this is just going to be a few years. A few years and the Lord's going to bring you back from Babylon. A few years and the Lord is going to humble Nebuchadnezzar, take him out because he's this pagan king that God doesn't like. But Jeremiah had to stand up in the courts of the temple and in the courts of, the, uh, of Israel and say, hey, actually, it's going to be 70 years. And of course, as you can imagine, that didn't get him a lot of fans. Because as it was then, so is it today. As it is today, so it was then. A lot of times people want the easy way out. And they'll hire prophets full time to tell them about that easy way out in the name of the Lord. But a true prophet doesn't say what people want to hear. A true prophet says what God is saying, even if it comes with consequence. Yeah. Even if it makes them unpopular. Yeah. Even if they don't win the popularity contest with the church. A true prophet will say what God said. They'll add nothing to it. Take nothing away from it. They'll declare the word of the Lord what God's saying. Amen? Yeah. Yeah. Jeremiah said it's going to be 70 years. And in fact, that evil pagan king that you're talking about He's actually God's servant, right? He's actually God's servant that God has appointed for your judgment, Israel. That God has appointed for your chastisement because you kept whoring after other gods when I told you not to. Are you following me this morning? But the Bible says here in verse 14 of Daniel 10 that, that, that the angel told him the vision refers to many days yet to come. You have to prepare your heart. You have to humble yourself for what God's going to say when the breakthrough comes. And you have to put all of your anticipation. You have to put all of your desires. You have to put all of your thoughts about the way you think it should turn out on the altar and 
to submit to God's plan for your life. And this is where I have to tell you the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. There are some of you that will contend for things, and at the end of the day, the Lord will say, hey, I'm actually not going to give that to you. There are some of you that will believe God for things, and it may not happen. But let me tell you something about the Bible, about the things of the kingdom. When a seed dies, when it falls into the ground and dies, it will come back every single time a multiplied harvest. Amen? Amen. Even the things that do die, even the things that do remain disappointments, when you give those things to the Lord, I'm telling you, it's going to come back into your life in a multiplied harvest. And God is going to bless you even greater than you ever anticipated. Amen? Amen. So my final word for you that I have this morning is die to your own ideas. Die to your own thoughts about the way you think it has to happen and submit to God's plan for your life. Submit to God's plan for your life. Amen? Submit to God's purpose. Amen? Don't get me wrong. There's things that God will speak to you and he intends to give you those things and he will give you those things as you pray and press through. But a lot of times... As it is in the kingdom, those things, when they are given to us, they come in a different way than we thought. Amen? I referenced Joseph earlier. God fulfilled the word, but it was, it was in a way that he did not expect. It was in a way that he would not have chosen for himself. And let me tell you something right now. You're not wise enough. You're not smart enough. You're not intelligent enough to choose everything for yourself. God chooses. Amen? God has chosen you. God has called you. God has given you a destiny. God has given you a purpose. And you need to trust that purpose that God has given you. Amen? You need to trust the call of God that he's put on your life. Amen? Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this word this morning, Lord. We thank you, Lord, and we agree with the word of the Lord this morning. Come on, saints, agree with the word of the Lord. Lord, we agree, Lord, that as we've been in transition, as we've been contending, God, as we haven't settled, God, as we haven't been sitting on our hands, Lord, we agree that the angel is on its way. We agree that breakthrough is imminent, God. And we choose to keep praying. We choose to keep fasting. We choose to keep humbling ourselves, Lord. And Lord, I pray this morning, God, for grace from on high. I pray for grace, Lord God, to flow from Emmanuel's veins. Grace to keep going. God, let grace, great, great grace be upon your people this morning, God. Lord, let great grace be upon this church. Let great grace, Lord, be upon this pastor, upon this family, upon the leadership here. Great grace, Lord, I pray, to keep going, to keep believing, to keep standing on the word, regardless of what external circumstances dictate and say. We choose to agree with the word of the Lord this morning. And we choose to keep doing, Lord, what it is you're calling us to do. And Lord, we just ask right now, search our hearts, God. Is there anything within my heart that offends you? Is there anything that's resisting the will of God for my life right now? Is there any area that I'm being disobedient in, God? Show me. Show me. And give me grace to repent. I want to tell you this morning, can I have my, my sister play for a moment? Is that all right? Oh, I want to tell you this morning, as every eye is closed and every head is bowed. I want to tell you, these altars are open this morning if you need to do business with God. These altars are opening, open right now if you need to come and repent. Some of you may know that you've blown it. You've known that you've disobeyed. But you don't have to carry the shame about that. You don't have to carry the uh, discontentment about that anymore. You can give that to the Lord. You can cast your cares upon Him. You can take on His, his burden, His yoke. His yoke is easy. His burden is light. Amen? So I just want to tell you that here this morning. These altars are open. If you need to do business with God, come to the altar. Do business with God as I'm praying. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We choose to keep believing God. We choose to keep pressing in. Help us to endure, Lord, those difficult times where we're being misunderstood. Help us to endure, Lord, those difficult times when we feel alone. I want to speak to those who feel alone here this morning. You're not alone. God's with you. He's never left you. He's never forsaken you, and he never will. He never will. 
And some of you, the Lord is bringing you to a place where you can honestly say in your heart, you know what? I have Jesus, and that's all I need right now. I have Jesus, and that's all I need right now. The Lord is dealing with anxiety here this morning. I believe he's healing anxiety. He's helping people that have what's called anxious attachment wounds. Those wounds are being healed in Jesus' name. There's some of you that freak out whenever people leave. You freak out whenever people transition, whenever people are no longer around. And the reason why is because it's triggering a wound that you have. It's triggering a wound that you have because at one point in your life you were abandoned. Probably in your childhood, probably when you were younger. The Lord wants to come and heal that what's called an attachment wound. He wants to come and heal that wounding of abandonment. The Lord will say to you this morning, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. I am with you unto the end. Lord, I pray for strength, Lord, to walk the path of Daniel. I pray for strength, Lord God, to be strong, to stand on the word of the Lord. And for those that have been beaten down, for those that have been ridiculed, for those that have been humiliated, for those that have been shamed, the Lord would say to you, rise up on your feet. Lift up your head. Stand up straight. Put your shoulders back. You're a child of the King. You're a child of the King. It's time to start walking in the honor, in the dignity, in the glory of the sons and daughters of God once again. If you've given it to Jesus, if you've asked forgiveness and you've repented, you have nothing to be ashamed of anymore. Quit receiving that shame from Satan. Quit receiving that condemnation from Satan. There is therefore no condemnation for those that are in Christ Jesus who walk according to the ways of the Spirit and not the flesh. I speak grace, grace right now to the hearers. I speak grace, grace right now to those watching online this morning. I speak grace, grace to the body of Christ this morning. And I want to tell you this morning that you are capable of of more than you could ever imagine. You are capable of more than you could ever imagine. So don't, don't ever catch yourself saying, Lord, I can't do it. Lord, this is it. I can't go any further. Let me tell you something. You're going to go further than you ever thought possible because the strength that God has put in you is far greater than you ever thought. You're going to discover that strength in this season. You're going to discover that power that's within you in this season. Because the circumstances that you're in is going to draw that power out. There's some of you that are going to become more resourceful than you've ever been before. And the pressure that you found yourself under is going to cause you to dig deep and find that resourcefulness. Amen? Those of you that are in struggles in your ministry, you're in struggles in your business, you're, in struggle, uh, you're struggling to put food on the table. You're struggling to pay the bills. Let me tell you something. There's resourcefulness in you. There's resourcefulness in you that you're not aware of right now. You're going to find a way through in the name of Jesus. You're going to find a way through in the name of Jesus. New clients are on their way. New supporters, new partners of the ministry are on their way. New members are coming to this church. They're on their way in Jesus' name. The key individuals that you need, the true investors, the businessmen, the businesswomen, the people that you need to really invest and really be a resource in your life, they're on their way in Jesus' name. The angel is on his way. Just keep going. Keep going. Keep praying. And fulfill your fast before God. Fulfill your part before God Almighty. In Jesus' name. God bless you.